Good morning, this is Ryan of Midnight, and uh, this is part two of the local app video. Um, what I want to go over now is the data tab. I want to explain all the data logging and graphing functions of the local app. Um, in video one, we went over the main tab status and all the general info, all the gauges, and how to set up the actual uh, IP and stuff. Um, any questions on that please go see video one. Uh, in video two we're going to do just the data logging and graphing and in video three and possibly four we're going to do the configuration tab. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so with no further ado I'm going to jump in. I'm going to click on the data tab. Um, we're going to assume you already know how the local app, you know, how to run the local app and get to this point. So we'll click on the data tab. First thing you're going to see just under general reports is daily values. You can see we've done 0.8 kilowatt hours today or 16 amp hours and we spent zero time in float today. Um, it's really cloudy crappy day here today and this is also a grid tie system so it typically would never see any float time. Uh, you can see over here we have the lifetime values. This controller has done uh, 15, one, yeah, 1535.9 kilowatt hours uh, to you know in its life or 29,158 amp hours. Next tab we're going to see is the live tab and this is actually graphing live. So you'll notice there's nothing graphed here and that's because I, I actually just enabled data logging and uh, let me actually show you that real quick. So even though we're going to talk about this in the config tab when you start up the local app and you want it to data log you gotta go here under configuration and you gotta check enable data logging. Now what that's going to do is that's gonna take a timestamp every two uh, every two tenths of a second it's gonna take a stamp and save that on your computer's drive only when the actual uh, local app is running. So if I was if I stop the local app it's going to stop logging. When I start it up again it's going to start logging at that point. It is not going to backfill those data spots. So it's only while it's actually running. Um, it's very very uh, close data points so it's great for troubleshooting or monitoring like wind turbines. You can leave a computer running for a while and log it and go back and look at it. So again nothing showing here for a couple reasons. Um, the first thing we have to do is pick the values we want to chart by clicking that button and you'll see we can chart you know battery voltage, uh, kilowatt hours, total kilowatt hours, FET temperature, Wisping Junior state of charge, amp hours net, input voltage, watts, total amp hours, PCB temperature uh, which is the circuit board temperature which is right beside the switching FETs. Was Bang Jr. amp hours positive? Was Bang Jr. amp hours remaining? The output current of the controller, the input current on the controller, the battery temperature, the charge stage, the Was Bang Jr. negative amp hours, and Was Bang Jr. amps. Uh, Was Bang Jr. amps is the current going into the into the battery. So I'm going to just select battery voltage, input voltage, just just for the fun of it, and we have to go find that. And there's our data logging. Again, remembering that I just started this data logging just a little bit ago. This is all I have here, but this would, you know, populate out as you log, and you could select the the size of the log you want to see, half hour to an hour to a day to two weeks to a month, and what that does is compresses this or expands it out so you can see more granular data. Um, you can change the style of it from a line to a bar to a, a, a round, you know, kind of a more arts and craft or sketchy, you know, just some different personal preference looks, if you will. The other thing you can do is you can export this to a CSV file on your desktop. So if you were doing, uh, you know, logging for a reason like a wind turbine or something, you could grab this file, export it, and look at it as a CSV. Because what you're seeing here is pretty coarse. You know, remember this is stamping every two tenths of a second, and uh, in this case here, we're, uh, you know, we're looking at it pretty. It's pretty coarse. We're not really able to see every one of those little stamps. If we export it as a CSV file, we can look at you know five times a second and uh, really get down into the weeds on that and see what's going on. Again, uh, you can pick the day that you're graphing here. Um, if there was no data saved on the computer for that day, you see it won't you won't be able to click on it. In my case, the only day we saved any data was on the 17th, and that's why I can click on it. You could switch between the months and the year by going forward or backward up here. Um, 
and that's pretty much it for the live. Like I say, these little arrows here move you forward and backward in time. Again, I don't have anything else there because this is all I've logged. If I had three or four days worth of logs, I could keep clicking forward or backward and look at it in half hour increments, or I could break it out into a larger scale. So again, that's the live data. Remembering the values to chart, remembering to turn on logging on the config tab, and uh, that's pretty much it. The offline, well, let me uh, actually show you this up here. There's this little arrow, it's a little hard to see, little arrow right there. That <coughs> excuse me, that will minimize that back down so we can get all the other tabs. Uh, in this case, now we want to go to the offline data. And what this is actually doing now is this is actually going to the classic and asking it for 380 data points. Um, that it has stored for the last 380 days and that's the historical values for those days and you will see here um, it's dated on the left hand column the kilowatt hours the classic made for the day the time the stamp was taken for the day which will typically be right before midnight uh, the time it spent in float uh, the high power kilowatt hours I mean kilowatts I'm sorry for the day so what was the peak that controller saw for production at any one time during the day the high FET temperature for the day and the high input voltage for the day and the high battery voltage for the day. So it's kind of handy. You can go look at that and uh, see at a glance, you know, did I go to float every day? Did I go to float a couple times or, or you know, something like that. You, it's, it's great for troubleshooting, especially for you, your installer to be able to look at it and go back and say, well, you've, you know, not gone to float in three weeks. I think we need to have more PV or whatever the case may be. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can expo export this as well to a CSV file. It does take quite a while to download from the classic. You'll notice this little export button is not lit up yet. It tells us to please wait while it's finished downloading the data. Uh, when that's all done and it's all downloaded from the controller into the local app, you can click that button and save it to your computer as a CSV file and go through that as well or keep it as a log, you know, because it is only 380 days that are stored in the classic and it's first in, first out. If you were running for four or five years and you wanted to keep a, a lifetime log, you could export this once a year, if, if you will, and uh, put it into a log file yeah, and save that. Um, so there you see the export light just lit up. That means it's all downloaded and we can now go save that to our computer if we wanted. We can also look down through the days um, and, and look at what's going on here. Um, you know, different days, different kilowatt hours. What's go you know, it, it's just good at a glance, uh, at a glance data. And that again, same little arrow will minimize that. And that pretty much sums up the logging again. You've got the one thing to remember if you want to save is to go to the config tab and make sure the enable data logging is checked. Then when you go to data, again, you've got three tabs. You've got the reports, which is, you know, what's happened today, what's happened in the lifetime. We have the live view, which we have to pick the values that we want to chart. Um, I think you can select them all, but it's going to get really confusing, you know, on here. Uh, I should also point out that if you want to export the file, I th I, it only exports what you have checked here. So the computer is actually logging all of these values all the time right now, but it's not actually displaying them. And if I was to go click export, in this case, it's only going to export the battery voltage and the input volt. If I check all these other boxes and click export, it's going to export all those values for me. So the, the, the data is on the computer. You just have to make sure you check the right boxes to export what you actually want to see. Um, and then again, the offline, like we talked about, it's now downloading those again. So that's pretty much it for data logging and part two of this video series. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with part three here and possibly four to go over the configuration tab. So we look forward to seeing you in that video. And uh, again, if there's any questions on the basic operation, that would be video one. Thank you for watching.